I was in Belgrade. I saw the, the, the game when England beat Yugoslavia 4-1. I mean, I never saw an English team in my life, how they played the first 30 minutes. It was for nothing for, uh, England. To be successful, is the experience is very, very important. And also the international experience. This, in England it, now there's a situation that only the English clubs play each other. And um, that's uh, for the English side, it's bad. Also, it's very bad for the European side because we miss the English teams, we miss the English club team. I mean, uh, uh, such great uh, clubs like Liverpool, Manchester United, Everton, Tottenham, Chelsea, or etc., etc. We miss them in Europe. It's uh, going to be more and more difficult. Uh, you see the, all the international results, uh, the, the really the, the great traditional uh, teams against the small teams. It's not like it was 10 or 20 years ago, easy games, the easy games are over. Despite a series of knockbacks in recent years, both on and off the pitch, football undoubtedly can still lay claim to be the country's national sport. Every Saturday, hundreds of thousands of people go to the top games of the day. Millions more keep a close eye on the results. No other spectator sport comes near to matching that. And every weekend, thousands turn out to play football whether it be at Anfield or the less salubrious surroundings of London's Wormwood Scrubs. No other team game can match that for enthusiasm. I was in Belgrade. I saw the, the, the game when England beat Yugoslavia 4-1. I mean, I never saw an English team in my life. How they played the first 30 minutes, it was 4 nothing for uh, England. I mean, the way they played in, in, uh, in the European Championship, really very, very unlucky. How easy they could, they could beat Ireland, how easy they could beat uh, 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 Holland. And then maybe uh, England is in the, in the, in the semi-final. No, it was like this, yeah, but that, uh, that's football. Good, knock it in, and away we go again. Pick him out. There's no way of ensuring success in international football. No overnight answers. But the Football Association has laid long-term plans by developing a nationwide coaching system based on centres of excellence with its pinnacle at the GM Vauxhall National Football School at Lillishaw. Well, this is one of the schemes that the FA have implemented in the last three or four years. It's part of the blueprint to try to achieve excellence. It's getting and coaching boys and training boys between the ages of 14 and 16. We believe in the concept. It's working well, they are talented boys, it's a two-year scholarship and we're hoping to give them a better base and a better foundation so that when they leave here and go into professional football at 16 years of age, they will be far more accomplished than they would have been had they not come here. I get to Lillishall as often as possible to see the large progress under Dave Sexton and Mike Kelly. Now let's get the practice going, let's develop that technique. We've got to improve that passing, it's very important because if we have the ball we keep it. If we make bad passes, we lose it, and then we chase it. It's passing, passing, passing all the time. All right, that's enough uh, talking, because now let's get the practice going. Set it up for yourself. Go on, one shot. Set it in a nice position. That's a good delivery position. Yes, yes, yes. And make a run, make a run now. Pick him out. I like that. Well done. Well done, son. Yes, man. Yes, man. Yes, man. I don't mind a little talk. I'll run, I'll run. Stay there, I'll run, I'll run. Stay there, stay there. Yes. So there's a little run. Yes, here yeah. I am. That's good. Good. All right, I'll take that one. Then I can lay it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, you've got to practice it. That's the only way you're going to discover it. Trevor Francis has played in Europe with English, Scottish and Italian clubs, so knows how vital that experience is to a player. The national team, they don't play that often throughout the season, and uh, it would certainly help uh, some of our players in the Football League if they were to be playing more regularly in European competition because they'd have different challenges there. I think that, um, as we all know, in the Football League, we have 20 teams, and the majority of them, apart from possibly ourselves, Queen's Park Rangers, who play with a sweeper, they all just tend to play the same way, with a, yeah. um, a flat back four, yeah, sure. uh, two players in, in midfield, or four players in midfield, and the two strikers up front. Whereas, as you know, nearly all the continental teams and uh, the foreign teams, they do play with a sweeper, and they play with man-to-man -man marking. And it becomes uh, a bit of a challenge. And uh, unfortunately, our players, they go into the national arena and uh, they're not having this challenge because it's something new to them. To be successful, is the experience is very, very important. And also the international experience. This, in England, it, now there's a situation that only the English clubs play each other. 
and um, that's uh, for the English side, it's bad. Also, it's very bad for the European side because we miss the English teams, we miss the English club team. I mean, uh, uh, such great uh, clubs like Liverpool, Manchester United, Everton, Tottenham, Chelsea, or etc., etc., we miss them in Europe. Another major problem for the national team is when the manager has only a few days to adequately prepare his team. I know the Football League have, for our next match against Albania, cancelled the previous Saturday's matches. That's fine and that's correct. But no England manager should have to argue for more time to spend with his team before crucial games. I read with a smile just the other day where the press said, I have almost three months to protect my job before our match against Albania. They're quite wrong. What I do have, in fact, is just about a week. I personally feel that um, for the national manager, I think it's, um, it's almost impossible for him to actually change the way we're playing because um, you know, he has his players for about two or three days before, before a game. I think that it's down to the club managers for them to start learning what's happening abroad, you know, playing perhaps with a sweeper system, a slower type of game, and then if they could get together with the national manager, it would certainly help yourself. I don't know what you feel about that. Mm. Well, there's, <laughs> there isn't any doubt about the fact that uh, because of the little time that I have with the players, what I can't adopt in, into the national team, Trevor, is a new way of playing, is a new system. I've got to pick the best players that I can, that I see every Saturday, and incorporate those players in the best system that they understand and they That's play, right. you know, right. and get the best out of that. If I tamper with uh, a different style which the players themselves are not used to, it's a bit unknown to them, unfamiliar, I think we'd be up the creek. Oh, it would be very, very dangerous. It's uh, going to be more and more difficult. Uh, you see the, all the international results, uh, the, the really the, the great traditional uh, teams against the small teams. We have enough example. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, Malta tied against Hungary 2-2 in a qualification game. Cyprus, uh, they're doing a good job. Finland, they tied the game in Wales. So uh, it's not like it was 10 or 20 years ago. Easy games, the easy games are over. Obviously, one of the most important parts of the England manager's job is watching potential international players. I go to as many matches as I can and speak to managers about the players I am interested in. A chat after a match with the managers about their players is always useful and keeps me in touch with managerial colleagues. That was a, a, a good little tussle between Cotty and uh, Parker, wasn't it? And. Uh, it's hard to say really which one dominated, because anything hit over the top uh, for Cuddy. No, of them dominated one another, did right, they? There was right. a, a sharp little tussle in there. When he was at West Ham, Paul, Paul Parker used to normally dominate him. Did he? And today, yeah. as you say, it was an even, more yeah. of an even steal. Even match. If you was going to score, I felt Cotty was, he was the a man, yes, he yeah. scored a goal, yeah. yes. First, however, it's important to get lads interested in the game. Gone are the days when all boys clamoured just to play football. When I was a lad, I played two sports at school. Cricket in the summer, football in the winter. Now at school, that is quite different. Boys have options to play something up to perhaps 14 different sports which are available to them. I, as a young boy, went to football. What we have to do now is take football back to boys. And in doing that, if they can have fun, if it can be enjoyable, and if they can become better technical players, that would be a terrific bonus. The best youngsters from that coaching centre scheme will be recommended to their local centre of excellence where they will learn more about the game in weekly sessions, often at their nearest football league ground. Around 5,000 boys aged between 11 and 14 have registered for the 120 centres of excellence. Generally speaking, our skill level is inferior to that of uh, the continental players. I think that's partly due to the fact that our school system here develops the awareness, the, the 11 aside awareness, but doesn't really develop the, the skill and the technique. Whereas on the continent, for instance in Germany, they don't play schools football. Uh, and therefore the techniques are worked on a lot more than they are here. At this age we're just trying to develop their individual skills, uh, the technique type work. We don't go into 11 aside games or tactics or anything like that. It's just purely technique work at this age. But the most immediate and important task is to qualify for the 1990 World Cup Finals. We cannot be complacent because there are no easy games anywhere. With the one point we've already got from the Swedish match and five games to play, we have every chance to qualify. Whichever manager is in charge, 
he must be given more time than at present to weld a team together. That will give us a chance to compete on equal terms with other nations. We've got an experienced squad and good players coming through, like Paul Gascoigne, like David Rowcastle, Gary Pallister, Michael Thomas, Nigel Clough, Des Walker, Tony DiRigo. That shows we are still producing good players, despite all the obstacles and difficulties. What we must do is not be satisfied, keep at it, and produce more of those players. But just like Franz Beckenbauer, we must learn to get our preparation right. Thoroughness is everything. Concentrate for the next game. I think the next game is Albania. It's not, uh, it's not an easy game, I tell you. So I gave you the pass like it's that. time we learned that we've no divine right to win every match. Success depends on everyone working together and making sure the groundwork for the future is well laid. I'm going to continue to do everything I can to see that's achieved. The pass is all right, just a slight execution.